of filming this review, I have been wearing the Too Faced Ethereal Powder every single day. This will be going into my second week of using it. So I've been testing it various methods, various applications, and so I just wanna bring you in now and kinda let you know my overall thoughts. Real quick, let's first talk about the packaging. So we have, I would call standard loose powder packaging. I do love the color scheme of it being black and that brushed copper uh, bronze shade. Now what's quite unique about this loose powder is the actual closure inside. Most loose powders, when we take the lid off, it has that plastic film with the little holes on it. With this one, you actually flip the lid. Ooh, did you see all that come up? I hope the camera caught that. With loose powders, I tend to work from the cap itself. So once I open up the lid, I uh, tap it into the lid and then I actually work from here. Once you close it, the powder is secure inside. I really do like that. So packaging wise, applicator, I think the uh, brand did a really good job on that. Moving on to ingredients. Now this is something that I need to make sure I am getting into the habit of reading. And the reason why is because I need to make sure the product doesn't contain coconut or some form of coconut in it since I am allergic to it. For some reason, in and I really don't know what it is. I just call it fake coconut. The coconut that Too Faced uses in their products, my skin does not react out to it. When you are looking at a product and you're reading the ingredients, keep in mind how the ingredients are actually listed. The percentage is the ingredients have to be listed if they have 1% or more within that actual product. And then the highest concentration, of course, is at the top, and then it goes trickling down, so forth. So when I'm first looking at the ingredients, the first few ingredients are bulking agents, and they're also agents in which it's going to help bind ingredients together. Then you're moving into dimethicone. You're moving into these ingredients before it even gets to silica, before it even gets to talc. And then the coconut water that is down here, it's even after the hydrating ingredients. So reading that, I felt safe. I still did a spot skin check before I used the powder, but again, I did not have any skin allergy. I do want to point out that if you are someone that is allergic or you do not like dimethicone products, you are someone that does not like silica, you don't like talc, bear in mind that's in there. So that is going to be something you're going to need to make as far as a personal decision. Is this a powder that you want to purchase, but also is this a loose powder that you want to use? The ethereal powder is marketed as a loose powder that is colorless and it's universal shade. So it should work with all skin tones. Now I can only speak for myself as far as my own personal skin tone, but also just playing around with the powder, rubbing it together, playing with it with the light medium skin on my palm, I do feel that that claim is valid. I feel that this powder is colorless. It does not show in any way, shape or form, ashy, gray, none of that is on my skin. Now when a loose powder is colorless um, or white in appearance, that is of course a concern with someone with darker skin is, is this color truly transparent? Will it show up ashy on me? Will it leave a white cast? No, I do not feel that this color, again, of course, I can only speak for myself using it with the colors that I have available, but I do feel that this powder will work on a vast variety of skin tones. Now, another large claim that the brand is stating with this uh, loose setting powder is that it offers long wear with the foundation as far as once you set it, but it also adds radiance. Now, that might be confusing to some, Radiance on one side and long wearing, is it going to be matte? Is it going to be radiant? You know, where would it kind of fall within that spectrum? And here is the results that I have experienced. After I do my actual complexion makeup, 
the concealer that you use is going to come into play. And here is where that powder adds that radiance. If I use a concealer that is my own natural skin tone, and then I apply the powder all over my face to not only set my foundation, but also set that skin tone concealer. Not only is the area underneath my eyes smooth, it has a very nice natural appearance. Another occasion, I used a concealer that I was using as my brightening concealer. So it was much lighter underneath my eyes. I press in my powder underneath my eyes, again using the same method. But when I look into the mirror, when I'm looking outside, when I'm looking in the magnifying mirror, it is bright under my eyes. The concealer is set, but it is bright. It's radiant. I feel that that is a major advantage with this powder. And, and here's the reason why. Usually when you're doing your foundation, you know, you set it, let's say, with a translucent powder. But underneath your eyes, you know, you want to have that nice highlighted effect. You might pull in a different powder. You're going to maybe pull in a powder that is meant to not only set, but also add some radiance, add some glow and brighten underneath. So you're using two separate powders. However, in this case, you don't need to. I didn't need to. I noticed that it was just mimicking that effect depending on what concealer I happened to use that day. So instead of using two powders, like sometimes I will do that, I only have to use one. I hope I have not confused you. It's just something that I just noticed that I could get a really beautiful look depending on the concealer and just using one powder. Again, I was impressed. I wanna to touch real quick on some application tools and methods. The method that I was using and I felt just yielded the best results is just using my Velour Puff. Pressing and patting in the loose powder to set my foundation and also underneath my eyes. On another occasion, I used a brush, a powder brush, and I was just kind of, you know, dabbing around. It offered a very light coverage, light veil of powder, but I still feel that pressing it in really helps just mesh into my skin and it also helps with the longevity of the powder throughout the day. And that was very important to me this past week because in Southern California, we've been having very high uh, temperatures here. So making sure that the foundation is, is on, making sure that it's not melting off, that was very important to me. I quickly want to just touch on the beauty blender or a beauty sponge aspect with this powder. If you are a makeup user and you prefer to use your beauty sponge to you know press in your powder, those ingredients that's at the top before it even gets into dimethicone, those ingredients do not dissolve in water. The molecule of that ingredient is large. If it's not going to dissolve in the water and you're using a beauty sponge that is damp, you might run the risk of, as you are trying to set your foundation, it might, the powder might gather. It might start to uh, not blend. It might not spread. When I tried that method, I didn't record it. I just looked at kind of areas on my face and I noticed, ooh, it's kind of gathering right there. And it wasn't doing that any other occasion. And then again, I was looking at the ingredients and I was like, maybe that's the reason. Sorry, I'm gonna have to probably give you homework. <laughs> so if you use this powder and you wanna use it with the damp sponge, let me know. Did it work or did it start to um, collect? into little balls on your face. I am curious about that method. To be honest, I felt happy. I felt happy every time I was testing it. I felt happy to pick it up, made me smile. I knew I was going to have a good skin day, a good makeup setting day if I was using this powder. Might seem corny, but I did. I had fun testing this powder out. Oh, one more point before I forget. 
flashback. It's not something that I experienced on any occasion with using this powder. I would love to know if this is a product that you've already have picked up. How is it working for you? And what application methods have you been noticing with this setting powder? How is it working the best for you? So I hope this review has been helpful for you. And I do want to thank you very much for stopping by and watching and spending some time with me today. Please remember to like and subscribe and share the video on your way out. And I do hope you have a wonderful day or evening. And as always, I'm gonna see you in the next video, which will be a review of the foundation that's right underneath this setting powder. Have a great weekend, everyone. Goodbye.